This is not the man I met. He is egotistical. He disrespects me. This entire marriage has been forced upon me. When you don't have trust, when you don't have that foundation, the relationship is over before it starts. I'm at my breaking point. He has a problem with spending. You have champagne taste on a soda water budget. Yes, What's honey, going on? come on, champagne taste. <laughs> it's about the taste, not about the budget. You can't trust him anymore. The man that I married would never have done that. I'm not going to advise her to try to make this work because I think it's dangerous. I think it's gone beyond that. Here is today's case. She says her husband's impulsive, extreme spending has caused numerous arguments and her concerns go ignored. She's also ready to start a family, but he says he's not ready to give up his freedom for a baby. Will they work out their issues? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Crystal from Houston, Texas. Crystal, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Enjoy. Your Honor, this is the case of Larrabee versus Harris. Thank you, Juan. Miss Lace Larrabee. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Mr. Jared Harris. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court. The two of you have been married for three years. Yes. But you say you've had a number of issues in your marriage and you're trying to see if you can resolve them or if it's time for the two of you to go your separate ways? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. Larrabee. Why don't you give me some background? Well, uh, yeah, we have had a few issues. Uh, number one, the main one being his impulsive spending. Uh, also, he's worried about me trying to be perfect all the time. I feel like everything we do is usually on his terms. And I want to have a baby, and he wants to put it off. What do you have to say about this, Mr. Harris? Uh, yeah, all those things are true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not ready to have a baby, so... Yeah, that's one big reason. So what about your impulsive spending? She mentioned. Uh, yeah, I spend my money that I make, so, you know. I you really don't see don't. an issue with it? No, I don't, see a, I don't see an issue with it. Like, if I make the money, then I'm going to spend the money. Interesting. Yeah. The two of you were together for nine years. Yes, you're on. So, you've known each other a long time. Mm -hmm. You've been married for three years, and a lot of these issues have now come up. Why don't you give me an example of what you're talking about when you mentioned the spending that you say has come between you? Okay, so for instance, when we met, I knew that he was into mountain biking, and I would indulge him and ride mountain bikes with him. He had like an old bike that I would ride. He taught me how to ride. It was great. We had a good time. We did and, it. And then it changed. Right. <laughs> well, it changed because he continued to buy more and more bikes. No, no, you left out the part where you stopped riding. <laughs> well, what happened? Because you said that Mountain bikes, they're expensive. How much do they cost on average? Okay, so these aren't like a couple hundred dollar bikes that you just grab at the store. These bikes range anywhere from 2000 to like, some are over $5,000. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't just have like one or two at a time, which I was fine, like I said, when we met. And we had like a couple of bikes that made mm -hmm. sense for two people. But yeah, he would try to like keep the purchases away from me. He would like hide them in one of the garages. So I never really knew how many we had. And then I saw like eight at one time. And he like justifies all the different bikes and says, you know, this one's for this type of ride and this one's for this type of ride. And if I rode more, I'd know more about the bikes. Which is true, yeah. Well, Mr. Harris, that, that is a lot of bikes. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's a lot thing. of money. <laughs> no, nobody's ever, you know, been on their deathbed and been like, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have spent money on that thing that made me happy. So we're, we're jumping to your deathbed. I just want to talk about <laughs> what's happening right now with, with, you're not on your deathbed, am I right? I mean, I hope not. So, <laughs> I don't know. do the two of you not discuss? purchases over a certain amount of money when you make them? Do, so, do you not have an agreement to discuss those purchases? So what I would discuss with her would be like if the two of us made money together, then I would be like, hey, how should we spend this money? Mm. But if I make the money, then I'm just like, well, I made the money, so I'm just going to spend the money. She lives great, so, you know, I, I do my part. So you really do keep your finances separate and you sp the, the money that you feel you make, you get to spend however you want to spend without consulting it? with each other? Is that the agreement between the two of you? So that is my issue. That is my number one issue, is that he spends money as if he's still single. And I get that he makes all his money, but there's, in, in no way did he make all that without someone at home helping him make that money. Hmm. 
have there been any other large purchases that he's made oh, on multiple. his own? multiple. Oh, the bikes are just like the tip of the iceberg. So in addition to the bikes, there's More also- More like investments. Because <laughs> he sees them as investments because he says that the things he buys, he's fully optimistic that he can resell all of these things okay. without considering every time he buys something large like RVs, these are How as much expensive does that cost? as a small house. What's the range of the cost of these RVs? Give me an estimate. I, mean, I don't know, maybe 20 to 70,000 maybe. Okay, so for a lot of people, that's how much their home is worth. Really? I want to know where yes. that's at. <laughs> I'll buy it right now. Maybe, maybe not in your world, Mr. Harris, but in a lot of people's worlds, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I got you. But, so why wouldn't you consult your wife when you're making a purchase for, some, well, so for something that expensive? So here's the thing. Her thing is, you, obviously you can tell she spends a lot of time on her hair and makeup. So she did indicate one time that she did want to go camping. So we went camping, tried out, she hated it. So then I went and bought a big RV and surprised her with it. Mm -hmm. Cause like, all right, this thing has a big bathroom in it, shower, all that, you know, so she could just hang out in the bathroom all day or do whatever she does. Went camping in it two or three times. She was cool with it. So uh, you thought if she had a luxurious place to camp, that's what I thought. That would I help. mean, yeah, I'm just you know, interesting. Trying Which to... it did temporarily, okay, and I enjoyed it and I looked forward to it. I said, okay, now we've got something. But the problem is, as soon as I was okay with it, he turned around and sold it, and then bought a smaller RV to suit just his dude needs That's... out in the woods. And it all goes hand in hand with mountain biking, right? Mm -hmm. Because if he's gonna go mountain biking, he likes to be gone for the entire day and be mm -hmm. able to take like a shower and he goes off all day, all weekend. Um, and yeah, so I was fine with it, but then he sold the one thing that I did yeah. like mm -hmm. after he had purchased it. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. It wasn't practical to drive this big RV everywhere just to go ride, right? So. And she didn't really care about camping that much, so I didn't think she would care. So I sold that and then just bought a smaller one, so it's much easier to go ride in. And you didn't but have a conversation a with her before you did that either? No, I thought she'd be happy about it, to be honest hmm. with you. But, but no conversation, no communication no. about it. Okay. Because, like he said, it's his money that he thinks that, you know, he makes all alone. He had a small plot of land a while back to build mountain bike tracks on. A friend of his went and bought a larger plot of land. Come to find out it's 250 acres. And then he bought the 250 acres. It wasn't his friend. If it was her money, I'd be like, hey, can we buy this land? And that was not something you felt you needed to discuss with your wife? Over the years, he's he's built mountain bike jumps, so everything goes along with the mountain biking, right? So he's he's into building the jumps too. A lot of the guys who ride do that. Then he had a small plot of land a while back, and then a friend of his went and bought a larger plot of land to build mountain bike tracks on, and he's gonna go and help. And he said he's gonna go help him. I thought, okay, that's good. And then I'm going through the computer, and I see photos, like drone photos from above, and I see all of this huge land. First of all, it was quadruple the size that I thought it was. And come to find out it's 250 acres. And then he bought the 250 acres. It wasn't his friend who bought the 250 acres. So, Mr. Harris, you bought 250 acres of land, and, and that was not something you felt you needed to discuss with your wife? Again, if, if it was her money, I'd be like, hey, you know, can we buy this land? We need 250 acres worth of land. But Like I said, everything's on his terms. I feel like it's, it, you know, things have to be... But the two of you, not to interrupt you, but the two sure. of you have been together for nine years, yes. married for three. Yes. So for six years before you got married, you say you have all of these differences. Of course. So what happened in the beginning? How did you meet and why did you think you were compatible? While we were dating, you know, she would bring up marriage and stuff and I would always say, you know, I'm just, I'm enjoying getting to know you, which is a reasonable thing to do before you get married. So, you know. It was six I, I feel years, like you Mr. Did, Harris. I feel like you flipped. I feel like you did a flip on me. Like, oh yeah, I'm into mountain biking. Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm not into mountain biking. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think we both had... So you think it was a bait and switch? <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. Why did the two of you date for six years before getting married? Sometimes it takes people 10 years, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't know. know, people change. I don't know that he ever even... Well, sometimes it takes people one year, but I'm asking about your... The, your relationship. I mean, I've just never been... Years. I've never been in a hurry to get married. It's just mm -hmm. not... I never, you know, when I was a kid, I was like 10, I never fantasized about having a wedding, you know? Mm -hmm. Just not my thing. Mm -hmm. If that's your thing, that's cool. 
I think you know he was I mean? afraid of commitment. And, uh, well, not too many 10 year olds fantasize about weddings, <laughs> Mr. Harris, but I don't know. I don't know. I had point. a sister who had dolls, so <clears throat> I don't know. I... <laughs> I ask you these questions because your life changes when you get married mm -hmm. and when you decide to create a union with someone else and all of the I and all of the decision makings that you used to make when you're just thinking about you, that's all out the window. And it becomes a we because you're a part of a team. I mean, that's the, you know, a lot of people say that the, the great part about getting married is all of the companionship. You're never alone. What's mm -hmm. the worst part? You're never alone. You're never alone. <laughs> so, because you have somebody else you got to think about in every decision you make. Yep. When you make a decision about your career, you have to think about how is this going to affect my family? How is this going to affect my spouse? I'm a little concerned about even three years into this marriage now, your position that your money is not your family's money. Right. That the money that you're earning is not, is, is not money that the two of you are earning together. I'm concerned that that is still your philosophy three years into the relationship and I understand why you're here because you may be married but you're still thinking like a single man. I love this man and I know that we would make great parents and he doesn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make is there's lots of kids that need a good home. Mm -hmm. So if we really want to do something virtuous, let's go buy a kid. Buy you a kid. Adopt a child. Adopt a kid. Do you see? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. What is the issue? You say there's a, there's a bigger issue for the two of you now because three years in, you yes. are ready to start a family? Yes, I am and uh, I, I put a lot of thought into it for years and I think just like he wasn't always sure that he wanted to be married, I wasn't always sure that I would like to be a mom one day. I knew I had a lot to offer a child and I love this man and I love all the things about him that are different than me and I know that we would make great parents and I know that we would, ha if we had a kid, it would be lovely and I know we, we've got money coming in, we're both doing what we want to do with our lives. Like this is for me the perfect time to start to try to have a child and he doesn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. What is the issue? I just, I mean, I feel like there's so many kids out there that, uh, you know, need a good home. So to me, it just makes more sense to just adopt a kid or, you know. So you want to have a child, you want to adopt? Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not against that idea. Uh, I just would like to at least try. I think I just always kind of saw if I was going to have a child, I would at least I'd like to try first to have mm -hmm. a child and then in addition try to adopt. But I also know so many people who did try to adopt and it's way longer of a process mm -hmm. than, you know, trying to have one on your own sometimes. And it's are very you, I don't expensive. Think, I mean, are you opposed to having a child on your own? I tried to get adopted all the time when I was a kid. So I don't know what you're talking about. But oh, okay. the point I'm trying to make is there's lots of kids that need a good home. Mm -hmm. So if we really want to do something virtuous, let's go buy a kid. Buy you a kid. Adopt a child. Adopt a kid. Do you see, <sighs> Your Honor? The two of you, did you have these discussions before you got married about how you felt about children, Mr. Harris? Yeah. Yeah, we def and definitely And was this have. your feeling before you got married? Absolutely, yeah. It's been my feeling forever. And I understand, too, his hesitancy, which I don't think he's really even touching on, but I'm trying my best to assure him that we're in a great place. Mm -hmm. Well, also, it's the time, too. Like, you know, uh, you're busy. I mean, if you're doing all these projects, you got all these things going on, mm -hmm. it's like, I, would, I wouldn't want to not spend the time that I need with my child, you know? Because you're so sure busy with work. Yeah, I want to make sure I'm the best parent I could possibly be, mm -hmm. you know? So that's another big issue. What, what do you do for a living that, take, that takes up all of your time? Well, I just, I own two businesses, so. You own two businesses. Because, yeah. you know, there are presidents and CEOs of companies all over America I know, that I manage to successfully run their companies and also have children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your heart really needs to be in it. And if it's true what your wife is saying, that you have some unresolved issues that you've dealt with in your childhood, I always tell people you're not responsible for your trauma, but you are responsible for your healing.
And it's something at mm -hmm. this point in your life, sir, three years into this marriage that you need to address. I agree, Your Honor. She also has issues she needs to deal with. What is that? I think he also has an issue with... Well, she, she's I, very I controlling, like... too. Like, she's, you know, and she's always right about it. It doesn't matter what, what is it is. What does she control? You out buying 250 acres of land, RVs, and mountain bikes. That's what I'm saying. She tries to be bikes. controlling, but I'm not controlling. On a whim. <laughs> she tries to be controlling. I'm just not controllable. So... He sees controlling as just me. I don't see it. As me just basically asking for, can you just please discuss these things with me as a married couple? We do discuss things. We spend after the fact. 20 minutes a night trying to figure out where we're going to eat dinner. Okay, that's not the big issue. <laughs> that's everybody. <laughs> that, that's probably every marriage in America, Mr. Harris. But here we are. Those are the little things, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the really big things that's drawing a wedge in your marriage and in your relationship. Mm-hmm. So there are a few things here. I think that it's really important for you to understand when you made the decision to get married, you became a part of a team. Every decision that you make now, you have to ask yourself, what is best for the team? So when I ask you all of these questions about why you're not consulting with Ms. Larrabee, I'm asking you why you're not consulting with your partner, mm -hmm. with your teammate. You don't make your money anymore, you make our money. That, that's what happens when you get married. There are certain things that, that you give up and, and one of those things is how you think when it comes to decisions that you make and how inclusive you have to be with your wife in those decisions. The two of you should have a discussion about the amount of money that you agree to spend without consulting each other. Mm -hmm. Agree on what that dollar amount is. Any purchase over that amount, mm -hmm. you should have a discussion. From everything I've heard, Ms. Larrabee does not come across as a unreasonable, untenable person when it comes to some of these purchases that you've made. I think she just wants to be heard and seen. Do you have a dollar amount in mind today? Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, $5,000. That seems like a reasonable... $5,000. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Do you agree to that? I agree. I do not. I, I think $2,500, I mean, that's still a lot of money. I'm sitting so here we're going to have to go what, into what mediation I... after divorce court today <laughs> to determine the amount that the two I mean, of you will agree on. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want you to do. I want but you to think about on. what a dollar amount that you think is fair, because that is the crux of a lot of these issues. You including your wife so she feels like she matters in these big purchases that you're making, sir. Do you understand, Mr. Harris? Yeah. And then the second, the second issue is I really want you to have a discussion today in mediation after court about some of the underlying issues that you may be bringing to this marriage from your past that could be a reason why you don't want to move forward and have children mm -hmm. right now. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me, Mr. Harris, and I can't predict the future, but just in spending the limited amount of time that I have with the two of you today, I actually think if you had a child, you would probably be a great father and be really happy about the experience. Thank you. And you have, a, you have a lot to contribute to your family, sir, if you would just be willing to compromise, open up, and don't be the weak link in the team. I agree. I mean, I think she'd be a great mother, so. I agree. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. I love the fact that she came up with a really good solution for spending money in our households, and I do love the idea of picking a reasonable number, and then if we spend money under that number, then we don't have to consult with each other. I can respect that, and, and you know, I'm sure we'll figure out a number that makes sense to agree upon. We definitely need to communicate about having, you know, kids, and I'm open to talking about it more, um, so yeah, maybe we can, hopefully we can work it out. It even got me teary-eyed today when Judge Faith said that you'd be a great father because that's something that I totally believe and I've thought that for years and I love that other people can see what great parents we would be together.